India made history in space. It safely landed its Chandrayaan-3 mission on the Moon's unexplored South Pole on Wednesday, August 23rd. India is now the first to land on the Moon's South Pole. The country also became the fourth country to land on the Moon. Russia, formerly the Soviet Union, the United States and China have all achieved successful landings on the Moon in the past. In September 2019, India attempted to land on the South Pole, but a software failure led to the Chandrayaan-2 mission's crash. Russia made an ambitious attempt to land its first spacecraft on the Moon in nearly half a century, just days prior to Chandrayaan-3's anticipated landing. However, the Lunar 25 mission met an untimely end as it collided with the lunar surface on Saturday, August 19th. Russia's space agency Roscosmos lost contact with the spacecraft. The lander met its end due to a collision with the lunar surface. Competing with India, Russia was in a race to reach the Moon's South Pole. Regarding India's historic mission, Chandrayaan-3 has a set of crucial tasks. This data will be transmitted to the lander, which is equipped with three payloads designed to measure ion and electron density and assess the thermal properties of the lunar surface. Additionally, it will evaluate seismic activity around the landing site. Chandrayaan-3 aims to gain a better understanding of the lunar crust and mantle structure. The lander operates on solar power and has approximately two weeks to conduct studies of the lunar environment. Communication between the rover and Earth is routed through the lander, which serves as the intermediary. ISRO has noted that the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter can also function as a backup communications relay if needed. It's worth mentioning that Chandrayaan-2 had previously established communication with the lander module. In summary, Chandrayaan-3's primary objectives are threefold. To demonstrate a safe and gentle landing on the lunar surface, to deploy the rover on the moon, and to carry out in situ scientific experiments. Luna 25 was tasked with several objectives, including the analysis of the composition of the polar regolith and an examination of plasma and dust elements in the lunar pole exosphere. Chandrayaan-3, on the other hand, represents a follow-up mission to Chandrayaan-2 and aims to demonstrate comprehensive capabilities for a safe lunar landing and surface exploration. This mission comprises three primary components. The indigenous lander module is designed for a soft landing at a predefined lunar site. It has the crucial task of deploying the rover for in situ chemical analysis of the lunar surface during its mobility. The propulsion module is responsible for transporting the lander and rover configuration to an orbit around 100 kilometers above the lunar surface. Notably, the propulsion module includes the spectro-polarimetry of habitable planet Earth shape payload, enabling spectral measurements of Earth from lunar orbit. The rover is equipped with essential payloads, including a spectrometer and spectroscope. These instruments are instrumental in deriving the elemental composition of the landing site's vicinity. Additional payloads on board the lander include a surface thermophysical experiment designed to measure thermal conductivity and temperature. An instrument for lunar seismic activity intended for assessing seismic activity around the landing site. A probe for estimating plasma density and its variations. A passive laser retroreflector array from NASA, utilized for lunar laser ranging studies. These missions, with their diverse payloads and objectives, contribute valuable data and insights to our understanding of the Moon and its potential for scientific and exploratory purposes. Data collected by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter strongly suggests the presence of water ice in some of the expansive, permanently shadowed craters on the Moon. These icy reservoirs hold significant potential for supporting human exploration. 
water can exist on the moon in solid or vapor form due to its lack of atmosphere and insufficient gravity to retain one. In 2008, India's Chandrayaan-1 lunar mission made a groundbreaking discovery by providing evidence of water on the moon. However, it remains to be determined whether this water ice is accessible and economically viable for extraction. In essence, the key question is whether there are substantial, mineable reserves of water hidden within these frozen regions, untouched by the sun's radiation. It's plausible that water has slowly accumulated in these cold polar areas over millions of years, resulting in surface or near-surface ice deposits. This lunar water holds a unique opportunity for scientists to analyze and gain insights into the history of water in our solar system. Additionally, the lunar South Pole is situated on the rim of one of the most ancient and colossal impact craters in the entire solar system. This crater spans an impressive 2,500 kilometers, 1,600 miles in diameter, and reaches depths of up to 8 kilometers. Landing missions to the lunar pole can offer invaluable insights into the geological history and processes associated with this immense crater. By exploring the lunar south pole, we can begin to unravel the mysteries surrounding this ancient lunar feature and expand our understanding of the moon's composition and history. The moon's south pole, as described by NASA, is a realm filled with mystery, scientific potential and intrigue, making it a prime target for exploration. This fascination with the lunar south pole has sparked a space race to reach this distant region, which stands in stark contrast to the well-known Apollo landing sites clustered around the moon's equator. India recently achieved a significant milestone by successfully landing the Chandrayaan-3 robotic probe near the moon's south pole. Just days before, Russia's Luna 25 mission attempted a similar feat but ended in a crash. India's lunar ambitions don't end there. They are planning a collaborative mission with Japan known as Lunar Polar Exploration, LUPEX, aimed at exploring the shadowed regions often referred to as the dark side of the moon by the year 2026. Meanwhile, NASA's Artemis program has its sights set on returning astronauts to the moon in a series of missions, marking a historic return to lunar exploration over half a century after the last Apollo mission. This collective effort by nations and space agencies underscores the enduring allure and scientific potential of Earth's celestial neighbor, the moon.